ECS reduced for launch. Status check. Go, Alice. Go, Centaur. 20. 15. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We have ignition. And we have liftoff, liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the first mobile user objective system mission for the United States Navy. MUOS will significantly enhance communications for U.S. forces on the move. You're now hearing the voice of Marty Malinowski providing launch vehicle ascent data. Let's listen in for mission progress. Mark 1. Max Q, vehicle has begun throttling up right on schedule. Engine response looks good. SRB chamber pressures have plateaued. Hold lane stable. Booster PU is now in closed loop control. Engine response looks good. And the booster has begun its next throttle segment. Engine response looks good. Next event will be the SRB burnout. Chamber pressures continue to look good. And we're having SRB burnout. Signatures look good. And we've begun throttling back up right on time. And we have jettisoned solids one, two, three, four, and five. Looks like clean separation. And we've begun Q alpha limited steering. And begun a small roll for thermal constraints. Current altitude is 38 miles, downrange distance 50 miles, velocity is 4,771 4, miles per hour. Range track shows the vehicle making good progress right down the middle of the range. Coming up on our 2G throttle segment. And the booster has begun to throttle to maintain two and a half Gs. We have fired the RCS pyro valve and that system is now pressurizing the flight levels. Current altitude is 63 miles, downrange distance 131 miles, velocity is 7,284 miles per hour. Next event will be payload frame jettison. And we have payload frame jettison. Looks like good separation. And we have CFLR jettison. And vehicles begun throttling to uh, right on time as expected. Currently accelerating at 4.1 Gs. And we've begun throttling to maintain 4.6 Gs until BICO. Boost phase children is underway. And boost phase chill is complete. And we have Beco. Engine shutdown looks good. 
We have retros and stage separation. Set looks clean. We have locks and fuel pre-start. GN2 purge fern is underway. We have ignition on the RL10 and full thrust. Engine signatures look good. Centaur steering has been enabled. And Centaur PU has been commanded to fixed angles for the early portion of this 7 minute and 41 second burn. This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 5 minutes, 11 seconds into the MUOS-1 mission. We've just heard Marty Malinowski report the successful execution of events comprising the early part of today's mission, and all systems continue to operate normally. The mission is currently in the first of three Centaur engine burns. Our next event, the Centaur main engine cutoff, will occur in approximately seven minutes. I'm now joined by Commander Jeff King of the Navy's Communications Satellite Program Office. Commander King, thanks for joining me. Thanks, Don. It's a pleasure to be here for the inaugural launch of the MUOS satellite. Can, Commander King, can you uh, briefly explain MUOS and how it fits into our nation's space portfolio? Sure. The MUOS constellation was designed and will be operated by the U.S. Navy to support both the unified commands, the joint task force components, as well as the Department of Defense and non-DOD and allied agencies. MUOS provides global uh, communications to the warfighter in the UHF or ultra-high frequency spectrum. Can you uh, now briefly explain the uh, features and the uh, all the capabilities that MUOS has? Absolutely. MUOS supports a multi-service population of narrowband users. It's designed to support those users specifically looking for uh, mobility or comms on the move, as well as a higher data rate and higher operational availability. Uh, MUOS is going to provide approximately 10 times more system capacity than the current narrowband constellation, and it does so by bringing the latest mobile technologies such as simultaneous voice, video, and data, as well as improved services to the legacy users of the current system. The MUOS satellite will be in its geostationary orbit, about 22,000 miles above the Earth, and from that height it can see about one-third of the Earth's surface, and so from there, it uses its 14-meter reflecting mesh antenna to communicate with the users on the ground. Well, MUOS-1 is the first in the constellation. How many MUOS spacecraft will there eventually be in the constellation? Well, actually, there will be four satellites and a fifth satellite on orbit as a spare. Uh, this combined with the ground system, we've located strategically four different ground stations across the world, provide the worldwide coverage to the users. The, as the core of the MUO system, the ground station is are responsible for transporting the data as well as uh, managing the network and configuring and controlling the satellites. Well, Commander King, thanks for that information. And uh, now let's return to Marty Malinowski for more information about the mission in progress. And we are seeing Centaur roll to optimize telemetry coverage at this point. RL-10 continues to operate excellent. Chamber pressures are as expected for the set mixture ratio, and we continue to run oxidizer rich. And Centaur has completed its telemetry optimization roll. Body rates look good. And the RCS line temperatures have equilibrated with the bottle temperatures. System performance looks very good. Current altitude is 148 miles, downrange distance 1,497 miles, velocities 15,675 miles per hour. 
This is Atlas Mission Control at L plus 9 minutes 20 seconds into the MUOS-1 mission, and all systems continue to operate as expected. The mission is currently in the first of three Centaur upper stage engine burns. Our next event, the first Centaur main engine cutoff, or MECO-1, is scheduled to take place approximately three minutes from now. It's worth mentioning that today's mission is the 200th Centaur flight. Development of Centaur, the world's first high-energy upper stage, began in 1958. Utilizing liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, Centaur debuted in 1962 and enabled critical missions that paved the way for the Apollo moon landings. Named after the half-human, half-horse creature of Greek mythology, Centaur remains a workhorse of the launch industry. Now let's go back to Marty Malinowski for the call. And we have about two minutes remaining in this first burn, and all systems continue to operate nominally. Centaur is currently flying at 143 miles in altitude. Downrange position is 1,900 miles. Velocity 16,567 miles per hour. We're a little under one minute to Miko. Centaur continues to burn off excess oxidizer. Tank pressures are stable. Bottle pressures look good. Bus and battery voltages are as expected. At this point in the burn, Centaur should be orbital. And we have Miko. Engine shutdown looks good. We have 4S settling. CRDs have been saved.